The number one story trending yesterday across the country was <clears throat> Grant Denyer announced dead. Now, that's a tough one to read when Very you're meant tough. to see him in six hours. Yeah. So we, <laughs> my husband woke up first. First thing he does is opennews.com.au yeah. and he shakes me awake, yeah. puts the phone in my face. And I'm like, darling, it's he's telling a story from the past. He's not dead. Yeah. We it don't was, have to call him. That is a confronting headline. I didn't even see it myself. Oh, the well, solemn so photo little, they've used. Yeah, they this. found the one photo where you're not grinning like a Cheshire. <laughs> Yeah, and you, and Ed, you thought, well, your little your little team member for your I radio did. show was gone. And I thought I picked up my phone, and my wife honestly said this to me. She goes, "Are you going to text him and ask him if he's dead?" <laughs> and I was like, "Nah, why would I do I'd that?" Already <laughs> texted our boss to ask if he could have half of the money that was saving. <laughs> well, yeah, well, you know, yeah. it's funny is I actually did get a, a text from Channel Ten asking me if I was dead. Um, right. Yeah, okay. straight up, straight up to the accident. Okay, that's right. Okay, so Channel Ten sent a text, dear Grant. It's Channel Ten. <laughs> Are, Are you, you dead, dead, babes? <laughs> LOL. Babes. <laughs> so if I was dead, how do I respond? So here, this the reason that this happened, mate, is because you said uh, you went on a podcast uh, called uh, Rusty's Garage, which is a, a motor racing podcast that Greg Rust does. He also does a... Um, uh, one with James Morrison, the famous musician called the Rusty Trombone, but that's very different. <laughs> this this Rusty's Garage, you know, I don't know what it's about. I'm assuming it's about racing. Um, but you Pretty did much. go on there, and in a very emotional moment, you told him this. I'm on the TV. No, not that. You <laughs> spoke about one of your many car accidents, and this is what you said. Well, I think that was the day of the Melbourne Grand Prix, that day I had that accident in the Tarmac Rally car and the Lotus, and the first word out was that I died. So I remember Channel 10 were getting word from emergency services that I'd been in an accident and I was killed. And they were debating whether to talk about it. I know Matthew White was facing the decision of do we announce this right now and live on television or not. It turns out obviously it was mixed messaging and I, and I wasn't killed. I love the term, it was mixed messaging. So <laughs> when, <laughs> hang on, when, the funny thing about that Grant is that they're yeah. saying that emergency services had said that you were, that you were dead. Yeah, Who? first reports from the scene. I don't, I don't know why or how, but the first reports out the were that someone they had obviously called called for a medical response, and maybe they said for a potential fatality, and the word maybe had only got through that it was a f confirmed fatality, Jesus. and so that was the initial response. So then, obviously, then you got the newsroom who's listening to all the police yeah. scanners, the Channel Ten newsroom. They then ch tell Channel Ten who's hosting the Grand oh, Prix gosh. live event. And then I also got an accidental text message from the CEO of the network who accidentally sent it to the person he was talking about rather than the network going, uh, he was sort of circling the wagons and pulling the team in to make a cause to whether announce what? it in the middle of the, of the live broadcast. That, so that, he was that texting about was you potentially to, passing away and texted it to you. To me by mistake. Oh, God, that's so awkward. Oh, God, that's awkward. <laughs> wow. That is so awkward. All right, but you're okay. Can you confirm? Because Wilkins will go with it. He killed Jeff Goldblum one morning. He will go with it this morning. You're very much alive. I'm very much alive. Okay.